Hello. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crafty Beer Reviews. Today I have my guest star Chad on the show again. Hello everyone. The last time I think all you saw was his nose, so... Probably all you're seeing right now. <laughs> but! <laughs> Today, this is episode number 18, and I thought the perfect way to celebrate would be with the 18th anniversary of Great Divide. This is a double IPA that's been aged in oak barrels. Uh, didn't really know that there was too much uh, aging going on with IPAs. I mean, they're typically drank more fresh, you know? So this should be pretty interesting. I've never had an oak aged IPA before. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. You got some nice shiny foil on here, but this is the second Great Divide beer I've had on here. And I know I'm a really big fan of their beer, and so is Chad. I believe we discovered that uh, together. Yep, yep, we yep. We like yep. to Great Divide. They uh, haven't had much brewery. that isn't good by them. Never no. been disappointed. They're definitely one of the top. They're up there with like Founders, Stone, Bells, you know, you name it. Whatever, but they're really good, so I've been looking forward to this. Um, since this is a double IPA, you definitely want to have this at about 55 degrees. Maybe a little bit warmer, you know, so you can get a lot of the hop flavor and whatnot. And this is 10% alcohol, so since this is a bomber, it's a good idea to share with a friend. <laughs> Otherwise, you might end up in a gutter over this for sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, don't, don't drink alone, everybody. If you're going to pick one of these up, definitely share with a friend or have, like, I don't know, maybe five or six hours that you're not going to be doing anything. <laughs> Probably would be the best. All right, well, this looks really nice. It poured out, well, on mine it poured out about a finger, finger and a half. On Chad's it's about three fingers worth of, uh, what, about, it looks pretty white, maybe off-white head there. Um, has a really nice uh, color. amber color to it. Yeah, I wasn't like, expecting that at all. No, it's a, bit, it's a bit darker. I think it might be from the, uh, the oak aging, you know, yeah. probably imbued some of that in there. And it's extremely clear. Not hazy like a West Coast IPA. This is definitely more of a East Coast type style. Uh, has a little bit of carbonation. Not not too much, but a decent amount. And yeah, it's kind of got like amber, kind of golden, reddish. It's really nice. But let's check out the aroma. Okay, so I actually get a lot of malt from that. <laughs> and you get a lot of foam from that. <laughs> yes, very malty. <laughs> like, kind of has a slight hint of uh, like caramel and toffee, and maybe even a little bit of vanilla. I'm picking up, I think, like a little bit of vanilla, and then there's definitely some hops there for sure. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite. Like they kind of have, I don't know, it's a mix between the um, kind of citrusy and the piney, earthy type of hops. So. Really nice. That's what I, I, that's what I got from them. So this is almost, uh, interesting. It's kind of what I expected for a no cage. I imagine that, you know, there'd be a little bit more molds, you know, maybe a bit of a sweeter side since it has been aged. But then you do have the hops. They're just not as, um, like, in your face as, yeah. a, as a normal, like, double imperial IPA would be. It's a little bit docile for, uh, for a double IPA. Definitely. At definitely. Least the aroma. Yeah, and you can't smell the alcohol. Which is always a good yeah. indicator. You don't want to smell with the beer usually. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and take our first sip. Cheers, Cheers. everyone. Yeah. That is quite different tasting. Um, wow, I'm I'm actually I'm pretty surprised. There was a lot of wood in that. There was a lot of oak flavor, like right off the bat. There's a lot of oak, and then. It almost kind of had a. It started off slightly, uh, slightly bitter, and then it kind of got more sweet, and then it seemed it to finish bitter. bitter. Like it was really weird. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, bitter, sweet, bitter." Because yeah. yeah. like as it's lying on my palate, like it's actually getting increasingly bitter. Yeah. Like it tastes as if it's. I don't know the IBUs on this, but I would say probably over a hundred. From very this. very hoppy. Yeah, very hoppy. It smelled like, more malty than it tastes. <laughs> And then there's a lot of wood. Like there's a lot of wood taste in that for sure. Um, that's that's actually kind of crazy. I'm impressed. Put that in IMO. 
also an avid fan of IPAs. Can't really go wrong. No, me too. I think I've had more IPAs on the on the episodes than probably anything else. But oh man, this is it's good, but I still can't get over that wood taste. Like that is so dominating. Because it's like you get all of that oak. Because it, it tastes almost like you're biting into a, pe a piece of fresh oak. It's really weird, like how strong the oak is. And then it kind of goes to this slightly sweet kind of caramel and a little bit of vanilla. There's definitely a little bit, not much. I, I smell it more than I can taste it, I think. It definitely has movements in, in where when you take your sip and you drink it, as it moves through your mouth, it, the flavors have movements with it. It's... it's has a lot of body and it has a symphony of flavors I would give it an eight I believe yeah this is it's good it, it does kind of have a lot of because it does kind of change because it really has almost like like you were saying you know like a symphony or something that's and it's it is really full body definitely for an IPA because IPAs are usually you know, more on the medium the body but this is definitely full body and it's really creamy I think it's the oak that gives it the mm-hmm Quality. Yeah, I think so. It is a little bit creamy. Yeah, like it almost. Yeah, it, which it's, is also <laughs> odd for an IPA. It but. is. It's 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 like a really weird hybrid. I've I've never tasted anything like this before. Um, I don't think most breweries really do uh, oak aging or any kind of aging with IPAs. Typically, like I said earlier, you know, usually want the hops really really fresh, but still a ton of pop in here. I mean, yeah. you know, I I couldn't imagine drinking this uh, before they aged it probably be pretty intense. I mean, that'd be okay with me. I'm a big hop head. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> Very much so. so, yeah, this is this is good, though. Um, I think I'm going to go with a um, uh, 3.8 for this one. It's I like it, but it's one of those things where I also, I think I enjoy like a straight-up Imperial IPA way, way more in general. And that's just my preference. Like, this is good. It's just... It's really unusual, and the wood I like it, but it's almost a little bit distracting. Like if it toned down a little bit more, you could probably get a little bit more of the other flavors, because that wood is like the oak just it stands out so much. But at the same time, it's really refreshing to have something this full body for an IPA. And you know when so many people are making impure IPAs, they're making well just all kinds of IPAs in general nowadays. Yeah. It is it is nice to have something different. It is very different. Because so many, I mean, I feel as if Anheuser-Busch is going to come out with an IPA sooner or later. I mean, there's so many on the market. There's so many on the market right now. I could just see them. They'd probably add three hops and then, you know. For a whole batch. For a whole batch. Uh, you know, but not a good idea. But yeah, it's, it's just interesting because it has that oak and then like the bitterness and then the caramel, a little bit of toffee and vanilla, which makes it really sweet. Not too sweet. It's a good balance. Yes. And then it has that hot bitterness at the end. It's really, really dry, and it clings to your uh, tongue. Like, after I sit here for a few seconds not having a sip, I really want to go back and have another sip. Uh, but this is... And it's pretty drinkable, Again, too. share with your friends. Yeah. If you are anything like, like our taste buds are having right now, yes, I want to pick this up and, and keep taking those little, little sips on it. Cause and it's, it's easy it, to drink. Yes. It's very drinkable, and it... Just it hits me with different flavors every like every time. It just yeah, it's really complex. Flows in, it flows into a different into a different flavor throughout the drink. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, I, I really enjoy this, and you know, if if you're into um, you know IPAs and you want to try something unusual, definitely pick this up. I mean, it's only going to be around for now, you know, and then it's going to be gone. So definitely try it. Worth it for sure. Definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, and you know what else I really like? Can't taste the alcohol. Yeah. Because there's a lot of beer. I've even had beer that's as low as 8% where you can actually taste, you know, some alcohol, like almost a bite. But here at 10% and you don't get any. So that's always a big thumbs up. Yeah. Like this is nice. Very good. Um, so you go out of five? Yeah, yeah, out of five. I would give it a four. Yeah, I guess I should have probably told you that before. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's really good. So uh, three point eight for me, four for Chad. Pick it up if you can find it because this wasn't too expensive. Either. I think it was like nine bucks my local beer store. So definitely worth it. Uh, another good one from Great Divide.
All right, guys. Well, that does it for this beer review. And remember, if you want to see any particular beer reviewed, just let me know, and I will try and get back to that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed, and we're going to get back to these beers. Uh, enjoy the rest of our afternoon. We hope you do the same. Cool runnings.